All right, so anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and go over the many different ways to open a bottle of wine because what's important isn't what the bottle looks like, it's what's inside. And how do you get inside of the bottle? Well, there's a few different ways. Obviously, if we have a screw cap, then you just unscrew it, you're good to go, no problem whatsoever. But otherwise, I kinda wanna go over the more widely used ones and one of my favorites and what each one of their specific strengths and some of their weaknesses are. Now, there's a, a blatant one that's missing here, actually two blatant ones that are missing. One is an angel wing. I vehemently tell people not to use them. <laughs> they're, they're really, really bad. They're pretty terrible. They break on, uh, all the time, and I would never condone someone using them unless that's just all they know how to use. And that's why I'm trying to show different ways. Uh, we sell them, funny enough, but uh, I just really want to show you the best ones, or at least the main styles. So without further ado, I'll jump right into it. The first one that is going to be uh, one of the more popular is the single hinge waiter's friend. So what makes it the waiter's friend? Well, it, it's not just a corkscrew. It doesn't have just the worm, which is this is called the worm, the, the spiral corkscrew, is, that's its name. So it has that, but also on top of that, they usually have a full cutter of some sort. This one has just the top rotary uh, blade cutter. Um, so it will just kind of trim off the top. I'm not a fan of that, but I want to show you that that exists. Um, and then also on top of that, it will have a bottle opener for opening a bottle of beer right here. Now, the, also the important thing is to note that not only does it have uh, one point to lever from, uh, like one fulcrum, if you will. It has two fulcrums, really. Uh, this this specifically. Now, some of them don't, like they won't have uh, this kind of rooster spur, if you will, on the back. What they're gonna actually have is nothing at all, which is terrible. I hate that. You wanna have two points, so you have better leverage. And I'll show you that in a second. Now, also, this is only a single hinge. So, this is a single hinge, this is a double hinge, and we'll kind of go into that when we go into there. Um, so, let me show you how it works. Say you have your ball of wine, you want to get into it. Well, first off, you have to get rid of the foil. So on this one, it actually has a foil cutter right here that's built in. And what you do is you press in right there and just turn around the bottle and ta-da, boom, just that easy. Now, I have an issue with that. Even though it did come off and I can now pour the wine uh, after I get the cork out, the issue is tradition. So what you normally want to do is you want to cut under the lip. This is what I mean by like the lip. So basically very, very top and then you want to go under the this ridge right over here. The issue is older bottles will sometimes have mold there and after every time you open the bottle of wine, you usually kind of like wipe down, make sure it's clean. And that will have little little things trapped in there. So if there's like a little bit of mold or some gross dust or something like that, and some of the older bottles where it's a little expanded, then when you're pouring, it will drip out and kind of catch it and then go into your glass, and that's that's gross. I, I think that's disgusting. So I, I don't really like this style. Not really a big fan, but it is what it is. So moving on to it, when you're actually going into it, you need a good worm. And this is, you know, this is, it looks like it's strong. The only problem is it's not Teflon covered. And we'll go into that in the next one. But I like a Teflon covered uh, worm. Uh, now, actually, when you're going into it, what you want to do is go right down the middle. Usually kind of like start off, a little offset. And then you're just going to go right down in. I'm doing it at this really awkward angle for myself. But, so just go right in. And then do not go all the way down. Uh, don't go until it touches like right about here and that's just so that you have first off good leverage See good leverage to That first hinge and then to that second hinge or actually to the second point of, of uh, lever so the second fulcrum You're gonna go ahead and push again now once you get towards the very top You're not gonna keep on pushing because there might be pressure there So what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap around like this I'm showing an angle, but you're gonna wrap around and you're just gonna kind of squeeze just ever so slightly. That will keep that little last bit from breaking off right here. And that's that's really not fun. I mean, when they break off, then you're stuck with them and you look kind of foolish and then little 
pieces of cork can drop down into, then you have to filter them out. It's just not the best thing. So now that's open, we're good to go. Take the cork out, snap it up, you're good to go. Nothing left on that one. So that's that's just your basic one. And it's called the waiter's friend, obviously, because it has many options and you can answer anything. So with that out of the way, let's go into the next one. Now, oh, also, many times that you reseal with cork, I'm gonna do it wet side down because there might be dust or debris on top right here. And uh, unless you wanna clean that off every time. It's a little hard to get it in, but that's really what you wanna do. So in the next one, same thing, but I don't have this handy dandy little foil cutter that leaves that little bit right there. You're gonna actually have you know, a knife, a foil knife, usually in a crescent shape. It's rounded so it can go around easier. Now on that, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna cut underneath right here. Now, technically when you're, when you're serving, say if you're at a restaurant, for example, you wanna cut one side then cut the other and, uh, and leave the label out to the guest. But um, we're talking about home usage for the most part, so I'm gonna do it how I do it. Now what I do is I'm just gonna go ahead and lock in, put my thumb on there, I use this for, for strength, so I can kind of pinch down, put some pressure in, get up underneath that little secondary lip right there, and then I just turn it, like that. Now, that being done, all I gotta do is take that foil off. Now you see right there, I have a nice clean cut, for the most part, right underneath. So when I pour, even if it like kind of drips over the edge right there a little bit, then it's not really gonna be an issue. So that's really kind of taken care of. I'm, I'm not really gonna have to worry about that, so. So now that that's taken care of, I now have a bottle that I can pop right into. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing I did before, but I'm gonna make sure this hinge is all the way open, all the way open right here. That also, that hinge is up. Because what I'm gonna do is the exact same thing, I'm gonna go in, notice that this is the uh, Teflon covered worm, which I'm a much bigger fan of. They don't get caught up, like, so even when you're like going in like a funky angle, let me try a little harder to make it not go in clever, you can kind of recorrect and you're fine. So even at that, I can recorrect and it's not really jamming on me. It's doing fairly good, even though I didn't do a perfect straight up and down. So even with that, very easy leverage on the first one. Uh, I'm not having any jamming on, on, on the, uh, the worm itself because Teflon will just slide right in, slide it right out, no problem at all. Then when I go up to the second part, make sure that this is pushed out a little bit so that the cork doesn't catch on that that uh that spur. So second one up and remember once you get towards the very end, what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach underneath and just kind of ease it out just a little bit. So there's no problem. Um, and then once again you're done there. That's that's good to go. And remember you want to do the wet side of the cork back down in the bottle if you want to reseal it for putting in your fridge or if you have a, what I call a gas blanket or gas preserver or even whatever else you're using. So you're going to want to have, make sure that it's down. So if I had any dust or any mildew right here, it wouldn't be a problem. All right. So what if I have, well, actually, let me, what, what if I have, you know, not the same strength that I used to have or I have arthritis or I have problems, you know, where I can't really get the same leverage. Uh, what, if, what if I need something that's mechanically assisted? Well, then you have the rabbit. Now, you'll notice that, if I don't know if you can tell on the video, my rabbit's a little dusty. There's a reason for that. I actually don't use it too often. I have it around just in case someone else wants to use it. Uh, but I, I really, honestly, like a double hinge and an also better. And we'll go into the also later. That's my favorite to just carry around, and this is just good to have because everyone knows how to use it who's in the industry. So if, if you have a waiter serving you and say their corkscrew isn't doing it or their waiter's friend or whatever you want to call it, I, I have one handy. I can be like, here you go, just use mine, it's fine. Use it. Well, the traditional one comes with this sort of opener, which I don't like. So I'm just going to toss it aside. I, mean, I just don't like them. I'm not a huge fan. Uh, you could use it just like you would with this, but... I'm just gonna go ahead and use the, the regular knife so I can cut underneath the neck. So once again, I like to just turn the bottle around to my liking, 
Normally, if you're doing it classically, you're gonna cut front, cut back. I can still do it, I just don't like to. Um, it's personal preference. So, now that I'm gonna use the rabbit, the one good thing about the rabbit has really, really good leverage. I mean, if, if, if you have weak wrists or not a very good grip or you don't wanna you know, go into it or you got a bunch of bottles to pop, like say you're a wedding, you have to open a dozen bottles in quick succession, this is actually a pretty good option, really. Um, I, I would still go with the Wears Car Screw because I'm just so used to it. I've opened thousands of bottles with them, but um, I, I just think this is kind of a good way to go if you if you have to have that. Also, it, they are a little bit more expensive, uh, so that's something to think about as well. There's more moving parts to go wrong because the worm will actually uh, engage and lock so it doesn't go into the twirly twirl as it does right there. But you know, it's it's pretty easy to use. I, I didn't have to, do, have to do all those steps. All I have to do is open it up like that. There's a good seal. So I have to stand up for this because that's another thing is you have to push down on table basically. Make sure it's lined up properly, squeeze, and then just go right down. See, so I can feel that went in and just go right back up. That's all there is to it. You don't do a little wiggle. And I mean, it's, it's straight up and straight down. And the good part of that is you don't have any human error where you might break off the end of the cork by doing it that way. And then all I have to do to take it off, now that I have a bottle to drink, is you do the reverse action. So just go back, squeeze on the cork, like, like so. Oh, see, it sometimes just says that. So then you go opposite. So that was a that was a, a brake lock mechanism where if you do too much power, then it will actually take care of it. So now I have that, got my cork, good to go. I can take this, do whatever I want with it, like throw it away or toss it in a big old pile. And then you're good to go again. And it's actually a Virginia Cavron, quite good. Um, hard, can't get in this state for some reason. So, so I, I covered those. Now, what's this? Um, this is my favorite type of opener. Uh, it's called an also. Now, an also, it comes from the term Oxo, which is uh, German for OIC, like, oh, now I see what this is for. Because when you look at it, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it looks like normal bottle opener for opening a bottle of beer, which, you know, funny, German, so it makes sense. Um, but it's also called the butler's thief, like a butler wine thief. Now, it's because you can open a bottle without damaging the cork. You don't go right into it. It doesn't affect it at all. I'll show you shortly. Um, I like them a lot because uh, they are also very, very thin and light, and you can wear it in a suit jacket uh, in, in one of the uh, side pockets, and it doesn't print. You can't really see. It doesn't stick out. It also weighs a lot less. This weighs a lot more. I mean, even like a cheaper, cheaper version, like say this one right here, which is fairly generic. Uh, I have so many of these. Uh, just even a cheap generic version. This is still lighter. This is much lighter and, uh, and also much sleeker. It doesn't really stick out, stays flat. Um, and also you can open, open bottles. I'll actually show you at the very end. So this is what I do. I use this for opening older bottles of wine. I use it for older bottles of wine because, uh, for example, I don't know, this isn't super old, it's 13 years old, uh, but Chateau uh, saint Colomb, uh it's Cote de Castillon, so it's, it's a good Bordeaux wine. I, I like it quite a bit. Uh, Sadly, can't get in the state. I don't know what I'm telling you guys about wines you can't get here. But I'm trying to teach you how to open bottles. So what this does is it will actually go into an older cork without damaging whatsoever. Now, you can also use the actual blade itself, which, see, there's two tongs, uh, to, to cut the foil. And I'm just not really good at it. I mean, like this, I've done this, like, maybe, you know, ah, I'd probably say something along the lines of, like, a dozen times. I don't ever cut the foil with these. I don't think it's a good idea, but just for just for sake of argument, let me just go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've scored enough where it should probably do just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and get my little edge. See, it actually does work. Um, it's really awkward using, so if you have another knife on you or even some other way to score it, I would prefer it. I usually have these around in case there's a cork failure, like in case you uh, you partially break off a cork. They work really well at getting in and working. And I'll show you show you how that works. So 
The also is is one of those things where it takes a little bit more experience. It is much harder to use uh, than say, definitely than like a rabbit. Rabbits are pretty pretty much foolproof. Uh, you don't have to really know what you're doing. Just clamp down, up, done. Um, and then a one and a two lever point and one and two uh, hinge point openers. They are going to be relatively easy to use, but you just have to get the technique down. This is almost entirely technique. So what you do is you take in the longer end, you kind of wiggle it in, just get a little wiggle, 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 wonk right there. And then once you get a good purchase right there, if you can see, once you get kind of a good purchase around the edge, you always want to get around the edge, then you can engage your secondary. And what you do is you just wiggle back and forth with minimum pressure. If it starts to give out, what you do is you twist up a little bit, and then you go back in. So if it starts to push the cork down, then you can just kind of ease it back. I'm actually doing it proper though, so. It's not heavy, so just a little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. You can do it a little faster. So now that you got your your uh, also down all the way, you can start extracting. To do that, you just wrap around and you just start slowly pulling up like this. See, not that hard. So as you can already see, this is an old cork. This this thing probably would have turned to dust if I had tried it with anything else besides an also. I just had a gut feeling about that. I mean, look at that cork. That cork is going to dissolve. So once again, you get to the very end, be very careful. And, uh, and at this point, the cork is completely whole. I mean, no problem whatsoever. Uh, that, was, that was perfect. Now, the thing with this is I can drink older bottles because of this. And also, if there's a break, I can get to it. Now, something that people don't think about on this, on this sort of thing is this is why I used to call the wine thief. You can actually put that sucker back in, and I could actually get that right there. And if I want to, I could force it back down. See? I mean, like, literally, I could just go down and then just wiggle back out, but um, I want to drink this, so I'm going to go ahead and. Now, that being said, that, that's, that's my favorite for a reason. So, I'm going to go ahead and end up drinking this, I think. So. Ah, so...